happen rather and of course before Bali gets to appoint uh, his uh, ministers and their cabinet and the government uh, of course the people that he'll be working with as time goes by and everyone is looking forward to that particular moment but of course we have already opposition leaders who are reacting to Bali's appointments who are reacting to the seventh uh, president Hakainde Hichilema's uh, work and the people that he's so far uh, you know pointed out to say that this is a place that I'm confident and will be working with. We have opposition political parties uh, like for example the PEP of Sean Temple, we have Socialist Party of Fred Membe and we also do have a handful of uh, political parties who are reacting to the appointments and the work of HH so far. All right, but we're here to scrutinize uh, the role of the opposition political parties with the checks and balances. Is it too early uh, to, to do so or is it justifiable for them to uh, be able to check, give checks and balances uh, at the moment? Uh, others are saying, well, let's wait and see how Bali will work uh, for the next 100 days or for the next two years. But others are saying the earlier the better. When we start scrutinizing uh, the earlier it is the best to definitely do so. We do have three guests in uh, the studio right now as my panelists to help discuss this particular topic at hand. I'll firstly introduce Jimmy Chella, the UPND National Youth IPS on Blunt Talk. Good evening. Good evening. All right. I also do have uh, Walter Kasempa, who is uh, the Youth Unite Zambia Executive Director. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Shisha, good evening viewers, and it's a pleasure to be here. All right, we'll be joined in by Kondwelani Sakala, who is the UPPZ Secretary General, as our third guest this particular evening, but as we await him to join us, gentlemen, I know you have featured on Blunt Talk before, but I will reiterate the rules for this particular um, uh, debate program. So we have two basic rules. You have three minutes each to answer the questions I do have for you on this particular program and uh, in case you have any counter reaction of uh, your panelists uh, in case of you want to uh, be able to give feedback, you can answer it within your three minutes and not your panelists three minutes. I hope that is very clear. Alright, let's uh, begin off with uh, Mr. Jimmy Chella, the UPND National Youth IPS. Uh, first of all, before I even ask you the first question, how does it feel to be in the ruling party from opposition? From opposition, it's, uh, it's a great feeling and uh, we owe it greatly to the Zambian people. And I want to take this uh, opportunity to say congratulations to the Zambians for doing the right thing, for upholding uh, democracy, for ushering in a government which has rekindled a sense or atmosphere of hope back into this nation. Today, Zambians are waking up to a new dawn each and every day since um, HH was elected president. Zambians are waking up with a sense of a better day. There's something better, our energies um, uh, uh, we, we have fresh energies now. We are, we, we are so excited as Zambians, and we know right. that this is what we wanted, and we're in the right direction. All right. I didn't want to start counting the time for you there, because I just wanted to have your reaction uh, with the transition of opposition to ruling party. But let's begin, and I hope that the technicians will take note of the time on screen to help us uh, take, uh, be able to do things on time. Uh, with the 13 days of President Haga in the Hichilama being in power, checks and balances are uh, already flowing in from the different opposition political leaders. Mr. Jimmy Chela, is this necessary? Um, it's, um, it's necessary, but you know, we, as a nation, we have a responsibility beyond political parties to build this country. Zambia belongs to the Zambians, and we can only make it better ourselves. Hence, we don't just need uh, uh, opposition political party for the sake of being there to oppose what government does or to criticize what government does. We need a quality opposition which is going to provide quality checks and balances. Opposition political party should position themselves the way UPND positions it itself when we are in opposition as an alternative government. If tomorrow we are going to have a general election, 
we should have an alternative political party which can take over as it is right now we do not have a quality opposition political party providing checks and balances which can take over the affairs of this nation hmm. hence UPND has left a very big vacuum which is going to take more than five years are you trying to say the the, the party of Sean Temo the party of Fred Member, the party that uh, former Water and Sanitation Minister Ra Rafael uh, Nakachinda comes from is not of quality? Uh, first and foremost, look at uh, the, the critics which are coming from um, um, the president for PEP, uh, Mr. Sean Tembo. You see, there is no quality criticism. And it's, uh, it's so unfair to democracy, actually, if you are going to provide UPND with such opposition political party. As it stands, there is no quality opposition political party which is providing checks and balances. We don't know when Sean Tembo is serious and you don't know when he is joking. Most Zambians have taken him for a joker and no. they are looking forward yeah. to a, po a, a politician, an opposition political leader who is going to provide quality uh, checks and balances. Not until then, as it stands, we don't have a, a, a suitable um, opposition party to uh, to provide that quality. But don't again. you think? Don't you think what they're saying is necessary? Uh, the the issue of that quite a lot of, of what he said. The first, one of the things is the appointments. Uh, he did criticize the appointments of um, uh, this Dr. Stumekom Sokotwani as the finance minister. Do, do you think that is necessary? You know, you, you don't just criticize on being. Um, he said no. Uh, he, he saved before in this in this capacity. You know, it's about it, it, it's about uh, the capacity of this individual who has been ushered into this this office. You, you, you and I know very well as a country, we are in the phase where we need to rebuild our economy, and we need people with a track record of doing uh, such jobs. Mind you, the the Ministry of uh, Finance is the first one which was uh, appointed before defense or anything else. This yeah. is the seriousness which President Haka and HLM attaches right. in, in, in reviving this economy. And we, we took time before um, uh, Honorembo um, Sokotwan was appointed. Mm. And he's the best man here in Zambia, as we are speaking right now, who can uh, right. manage uh, that ministry. All right. Uh, so I know your time is up, but with 30 seconds, you, you believe that, um, you know, Dr. Tumekom Sokotwane will deliver to his best? Definitely. And he's going to deliver under the leadership of Haka and HLM. Mm. All right, thank you so much. Let me get to uh, Mr. Kondwala Nisakala, the UPPZ Secretary General, who has joined us uh, just now. With 13 days of President Haga and Hichilama being in power, checks and balances are already flowing in from the opposition political leaders. Is this necessary, coming from a perspective of you who is in opposition? Thank you very much, uh, Chisha, and to all the lovely viewers of Movi TV. Apparently, I will say, as opposition political parties, we need to give chance and time <coughs> to the new office uh, uh, bearers. In as much as we are in a hurry to build the economy of this country, that does not mean we should push them to the corner at the expense of them making mistakes as in appointments in doing critical issues that has been damaged in this country. As an opposition, we are there, yes, to offer uh, checks and balances. Of course, there is need to be realistic. We need to be real with ourselves. I know, I've read, I've seen in, on social media, a lot of people have been throwing stones on uh, His Excellency, the President, of this country. In fact, let me first congratulate him for his soundly victory because that's what democracy is all about. Always there will be only one winner. And I congratulate you, Your Excellency. But the issue is as opposition political parties, we should not be in a hurry to throw stones where we don't need to. 
where we just want to be heard that we, we exist. We need to be realistic as we offer checks and balances. Mm. Are you trying to say that all these people giving checks and balances, the, you know, the cases of Mr. Binoculars, as Mr. Rafael Nakachinda, yes. who is uh, closely looking at the UPND, giving checks and balances, we also do have a Fred member of the Socialist Party, the PEP President, Sean Temple. What's, what, what's, what's your take on this? Are, are you saying it is unnecessary? With, at with the, the moment, yeah. it's not necessary. Mm. Because this man is only less than a month in office. He has a lot of things to put in place. That's why I'm saying we need to be realistic. In as much as we have over four years plus for him to deliver to the Zambian people. And for him to deliver on his promises that he made to the over 17 million Zambians. And this talks about every human being, including them as the oppositions. In short, us. We need to give him all the support he needs as a president. Where he makes mistakes or as a party they make a mistake. That's why we offer these checks and balances. Where it is not necessary. Mm. Not even say anything. Just congratulate. Do you, believe that, do you believe they're wasting time? I don't believe that they're wasting time because mm. I know what it takes when one is about to build. When you have found a foundation which is dilapidated, destroyed, you need to start from the scratch. You need to check what is under there for me to put up a strong structure. Right. If you are pushed to build without checking what is underneath, you may build in all time at all the structure will, will, you know, will come down. Thank you so, so much. The issues of checks and balances, let's offer checks and balances where necessary. All right. I'm thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kondwani Sakala of UPPZ. Let's get to a neutral perspective. Uh, let's, let's hear what the CSOs are saying about the topic at hand. We have Mr. Wataka Sempa, the Youth Unite Executive Director. Your take with the particular question I have for you, 13 days of the uh, President Hagai Nechilema being in power, checks and balances are already flowing in uh, from the opposition political leaders. Is this necessary? Thank you so much, Chisha. That's a very interesting question that you've uh, posed in this uh, panel. I would like to first of all state that uh, any government on earth uh, needs checks and balances. This is of the utmost importance. Now, one thing that we must realize is that when a party before, uh, is, hasn't yet formed government, there is what we call a manifesto, right? And this manifesto is full of promises, plans, and policies that they will implement once they form government. Now, the question we must ask ourselves as Zambians is at what point does a political party form government? It is the day that they are inaugurated and given the instruments of power, right? So at that very moment, when they are given the instruments of power, the Zambian people need to begin to provide checks and balances. And I'll reiterate what uh, Mr. Kondolani said. They need to be realistic, right? But they must be there. Because this is not time that is being wasted. It is necessary. Now, why do I say this? When a president of any republic, including his excellency, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, President Hagayinde Sami Hichirema, pronounces something, it becomes policy based on his position. So when he gave the directive, for example, to, to the now uh, new minister of finance, uh, Mr. Stumbeko Msokotwani, yeah. to, uh, you know, fix the economy, uh, dismantle, you know, the areas and, 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 you know, provide fiscus and things of that nature. That became policy. And remember the interview that uh, Dr. Msokotwane had. It was based on what was given to him by the President of the Republic of Zambia. Now, as opposition leaders, those are the things that you need to look at because the basis of checks and balances is on policy, not things that are unnecessary. So is it necessary? Of course it is. But it must be done in a way that is professional and that does not, you know... 
exude <coughs> or you know express some kind has of it been emotion. done has it been done professionally by the critics so far of course of course it has been done i would not say everything that i've said is true mm. but they have brought out critical issues for example we'll talk about the issue of the imf and how important it is i remember reading an article that uh, uh, president of pep uh, sean tembo you know wrote up on whether it is necessary or not those were critical points that were being raised from a macro and microeconomic point of view and a lot of people were actually agree with what he said now are you going to tell me that when an opposition just because it's 13 days talks about why zambia shouldn't yet go to the imf and say no let us give them time no the time that were given all right yes no, let, me, let me just hold you there because you continue and i hope that the technicians are taking taking note of this the three minutes starts again uh, with the next set of questions including what you're just talking about mm. i'll add on the other critical issues that have been brought in the issue of the free education mm. uh, and the issue of the appointments and let's just not mr rather dr stomach mm. but all the appointments that have been made so right. far others are saying uh, the special uh, aid to the president in terms of press uh, press briefing and press public relations rather mm. um is not competent enough mm. uh, we, we saw Savoy Imbola you know having a statement we saw different people criticizing um Anthony Wadia right but all these appointments let's let's look at all those and the free education and the IMF and every critic that has been um released so far any reactions in your capacity in my capacity uh, in the civil society, I would say, first of all, you mentioned the issue of uh, the president's press aid, yeah. which is uh, my brother, Anthony Waria. Of course, in my regard, I believe competency is based on track record. And uh, Mr. Waria is a young man who has uh, proved himself to be very competent and able to diligently articulate issues mm. some of those checks and balances that are coming over mr anthony Waria's appointment and any other appointment are unnecessary as the previous speaker said but um when, when you look at issues of policy like free education from grade one to to you know tertiary school that is practically impossible in the next maybe 24 months why? Because of, of course, the debt that we have as a nation. Of course, we've got policy issues. There's the austerity that we're expecting from the IMF when these negotiations begin. And there are a lot of factors that are need, need to be put in place. So is this feasible? Should, is it, a, is it a, you know, a delusion or is it hope that we look for? Of course, it's a delusion when you talk about free education right now. It is not possible. Our economy is in a dilapidated state. So even as the government is making pronunciations, even as the government is, is, you know, trying to create a sense of hope and, you know, a hope and, you know, excitement amongst the people, there must be always, always serious feasibility in what is being spoken. There must be always serious competency in the, the trajectory, the, the, the kind of framework that is being put in place. Because, Batila, umulembwe wachpua. Zambians have no time for try and error. Just testing, no, let's see, let's see. We'll end up losing our destiny as a nation. Mm. So we must be critical and we must be concise in how we do things. You have one minute. Let's go back to the IMF issue. The IMF, speaking from, from the civil society point of view and as an individual who's an autodidact in, 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 in economic issues, I believe the IMF issue is a very tricky one because we've been in this situation before. And uh, I must mention uh, to viewers, you cannot go to a negotiation with the IMF and not expect austerity. It is impossible. We must realize that Zambia is a consumption-based economy and not a production-based economy. So whatever austerity that will be put in place for the IMF to see the stability of our economy will hurt a lot of Zambians. But is it important? Yes, it is. Why? Because of the massive debt that we're facing. I mean, 48% of our budgetary allocation the past two years was going to debt servicing. Is that sustainable? Of course not. So the IMF program is, is, is you know, a good thing that we must, you know, do. Others might say it is not, but let us be very factual on this. 
we have a long way to go as Zambians, and we need all the help we can get. Do you, do, do you believe the, the, the external debt will be, will be you know, dealt with by September, actually November 2021? That was the time frame that was given from September to November. Do you believe that's feasible? Quickly. It is only, it is only feasible based on negotiation. What was said, Chisha? is that there are four months that have been given to ensure that negotiations take place and the IMF come in. So it is based on the ministry, the government, and the IMF, and how progressive these negotiations will be. Do you believe they'll be progressive? Of course I do. Based on the track record, of course, of the Minister of Finance, they, right. they will be. They Thank will you be. so much. Mm -hmm. Let me get to you, um, uh, Mr. Jimmy Chella from the UPND National Youth uh, IPS. Uh, of course, you know, the topmost issues that you are being uh, criticized on from the opposition uh, political parties is the issue of the free education, the issue of IMF, the issue of the appointment so far, and also the issue of, uh, you know, I, I had one where people are criticizing uh, the president, that is Mr. Uh, Mr. Hacker in the HLM on the issue of exposing too much information on international media. What are your takes on these things so far? Your three minutes starts now. Um, first and foremost, um, a government, if it has to uh, deal with the international and even the local uh, community in a more transparent manner, it should give sufficient information. And that promotes trust. And we all understand what trust economics do. Zambia today is experiencing um, an improvement in the, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the quarter because of what we can call trust economics. Our government today is trusted because it is giving relevant, sufficient information to its dealers. And let me come to the issue of uh, free education. Our president, His Excellency Hagaine Ichirema, has been emphasizing on the fact that he himself is a product of free education or government aid education. Today, Zambians cannot believe in a lot of things because for a long time, 10 years, we've been under a regime which was playing with money. We've been under a regime which has been enriching themselves and they're asking where is this money going to come from to provide free education. We are going to fight corruption. No individuals are going to be walking out with his sacks of money. When they appointed that, they are even dancing that they are the ones with Kasaka Kandarama. That Kasaka Kandarama is coming back into the system so that it can provide quality education. Now, for us as a nation to attain the free education for all, we need to be committed to build ourselves. Today, Zambia's greatest challenge is not... It's not finances. Today, Zambia's greatest challenge is we have a lot of young population, a young population which is not skilled. How do we skill a young population which has no resources? We have to help this population. Let's, let's we need to, to provide to, free let's education. Let's get back to the question, um, Mr. Jimmy Chella, with, with regards to you know your reactions to the issues that because you only have a few seconds now so let's let's not prolong the, the, the answers but let's stick to uh, to the discussion you've talked about free education let's get to the appointments now yes the appointments are all the appointments so far as it is we, we, you know we are not doing this for a few individuals with selfish interests you see they are People whom they prefer would have, would have occupied these positions. President Hakende Ichirema is doing this for the millions of Zambians who elected him and those who are represented by those who are eligible to vote. We are not doing this as, 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 a, as a party in government. We are not doing these appointments to satisfy few individuals. We are doing it for the millions of Zambians. President Haka and Ishirema is appointing people who are equal to the tax. Mm. All right, briefly touch on IMF and, and the issue of uh, dealing with the external uh, debt that Zambia has. Yes, um, IMF uh, fund is something which uh, the government will, will look at before any decision is made. It's something which is going to be, to be considered. 
All First right. and foremost, we know very well that... Uh, Briefly, because the time is already up. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just in a nutshell, you know very well that if we do our math, when you look at our debt and what is in the coffers, we are in the negative. We don't have any money. So we need somewhere to start from. You know, the major difference, it will be about the managers. It's about prudent economic management, right. which wasn't there in the past. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Let's get to Mr. Kondwani Sakala, uh, UPB uh, Z Secretary uh, General. Uh, Mr. Water, you want to counter react? Indeed. All right. You, 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 you will um, once, once it comes back to you. But let's, let's get to uh, Mr. Kondwani Sakala. Um, same question with you. Uh, in, in the aspect of the opposition as well, do you, do you believe the issues that uh, are being criticized, uh, issues of free education, issues of the appointments, the IMF, and so on and so forth, um, what are your reactions in your capacity? Like, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. Like I said in my area uh, statement and my speech, we need to be realistic. Mm. Being in opposition, it doesn't mean you remove your reasoning. No. We need to apply the knowledge we have correctly and be realistic. The appointments that have been made so far have nothing to criticize about them. Because I am not in the shoes of His Excellency. He started that journey alone with his team, running. Because he had a vision of being where he is today. And that vision is trying now to throw it to the Zambian people. In simplicity, he is saying, these are the people that have been dreaming with to bring the development, to bring the Zambia we want today. So we can't criticize him on the appointment of names or because maybe you don't love the person. I mean, who prefers the, uh, who to be in the position of uh, Mr. Haka and Echilema? Because in his position, he thought Mr. Anthony Walia is, is good enough for him. He knows oh, the finance minister is good enough for him in times like this. So we can't criticize personalities. It's about the policies, like my comrade is saying, not the personality. When one is looking at the personality, then he has lost it Oh, But once the policies that, or the manifesto that was told to the nation is being trampled on, that's when you now say to say, ah, Mr. Man or Mr. President, you told us, Free education. But what is happening today? What has happened? Not because he has appointed a minister of education who is taller or who is shorter. It's not about that. It's not about personalities. Of course, he should have known this person is capable. He should have known more better than you who is criticizing him. So the issues of criticizing the personalities criticizing ministers who have been appointed should not come in, not at this time, because none of them now, we can say, they have started working as expected, because they have a long journey to go. Yes, they have been uh, ushered in, like one minister, Musokotwane, the Honorable. Let's wait and see what is bringing on the table, because he has been given what he's supposed to deliver well, to the Zambian people. The other, the other appointment that was criticized was the, the appointment, in, in the words of Sean Temple, he did say that, you know, appointments shouldn't be given just because you were given in a big, big, huge sum of Nshima, in his own words. And, and what, what are your thoughts on that? Do you well, believe that's cr constructive criticism? Mr. Sean Temple, maybe... Yeah. Uh, he lacked some words to use. But the issue is, here is this man who is a president in charge of a political party. Now he's in charge of the whole nation. He looks at uh, Comrade A that is capable at this time yeah. to handle the national resources. I mean, who are you to come and say no because this person is old or is young? It's not about the age now. Right. And look at the experience the man has. In his old days, 
He did tremendous work. And that is the reason why I should believe the president apparently said at this time we do not need people who will be doing trial, trial and error. No, we need experts who will be able to control the broken economy. All right. And that's what he found out in the Minister of Finance. Thank and we cannot criticize the personality. Thank Never. you so much. Thank you so much. Great. Let's Thank get you. to uh, Mr. Walter Kasempa, the Youth Unite Zambia Executive Director. As you counter-react, it seems you've got counter-reactions to both on your panelists. All right, great. As you counter-react, also, let's talk about the issue of rebranding and branding of opposition, or let, let's just categorize them as political parties. Because one strong political opposition party has many members resigning from, from it, including the Secretary General, Davis Mwila, who today was considering to resign and get back to agriculture. What's your take on that? Thank you so much. So I'll begin with my reactions. Uh, yeah. First of all, by SG, that was a very powerful submission. And um, really, I would just like to echo what he said. You see, these appointments are very important for this nation. But my word to the Zambian people is, let us be sober in how we perceive how these appointments are happening. When the President of the Republic of Zambia makes an appointment, that is not an achievement. It is not. Because I can tell you, that the previous Minister of Finance, the one before him and the one before her, were all had powerful CVs. But where, where we are as a nation. So, as a comrade says, let us wait and see and judge objectively. Second of all, I would just like to react to my brother, uh, uh, Mr. Chela here. He mentioned something to do with um, trust economics and how it is a good thing that the quarter is, uh, you know, reduced because of these trust economics. However, my submission to this is that it is unsustainable. Remember when the President of the Republic of Zambia was just sworn in? Our bonds were so attractive. And the moment he stated on BBC News that no, Zambia's coffers are empty, our bonds were weak and the quarter even, you know, reduced. Is that sustainable for an economy that has been rendered redundant? Certainly not. What the president needs to do in showcasing this nation, remember the president of Zambia is the face of the nation. So our submission as young people is that let there be a kind of showcasing of our nation to the international community in a way that creates positivity. Number two, let there be a sort of system that implements the, the, the importance of the manufacturing industry and diversification of our economy. Only then can the quarter ever be sustainable once we diversify you have one minute I, to answer yes that. yes I, yeah. I, I i know i'm within time <clears throat> yeah now on the aspect of rebranding this is a very important thing and 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 as, as you've mentioned every democracy needs an opposition we see the patriotic front uh, saying that they want to rebrand we don't know what is going on there because we're not part of uh, <laughs> the patriotic front but otherwise it is still important for opposition to exist. We've got an opposition political party here, UPPZ, who want to form government one day. So their role is to provide checks and balances and to see how best they can do their politics in a way that promotes the integrity of this nation. So is rebranding important? It's up to the party, really. But if they want to form government, of course it is important. I mean, from the first to the second, there was a, a difference of over one million votes which shows that, you know, the Zambian people are leaning towards one side so heavily. Do you believe they can bounce back? That's the main debate that Do we is believe there? that the patriotic front can bounce back? That is up to the Zambian people. Well, the 17, 18 million as, as a civil society organization, as a civil do, you, do you believe that, uh, you know, PF has the capacity of bouncing back? Capacity they do have. Whether they will bounce back or not, it is up to the Zambian people to decide. Why? Because the rebranding of themselves... Zambians will either accept or reject. 
All right. So the power is in the people because democracy is power of the people, for the people, and by the people. All right, Mr. Jimmy Chela, you are once in opposition. You are once feeling how the patriotic front <clears throat> is feeling now. Uh, your comment towards rebranding of the party, and I don't know for a fact that you wouldn't want to, you know, to speak about them, but uh, let's, let's face reality. You are once in opposition as well. Um, I think uh, the issue of uh, rebranding, hmm. uh, as... Uh, as a party in uh, government, we were in their need of equality uh, opposition. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we are a democracy, and we, we, we are not going to delight uh, in the absentia of uh, equality um, uh, opposition. First and foremost, you know, um, we, what we do today, what we say today, affects the way society perceives us. That's why we are emphasizing that the likes of Nakachinda, the likes of Sean Tembo, the likes of Savoy uh, should be serious with what, they are, what, with what they are doing. You see? Uh, these are people whom we are expecting to form uh, the next government. We want them to be an alternative. Look at the way, um, uh, the way UPND positioned itself. Just when we are about to announce who are going to be the National Management Committee members. The whole nation was looking forward, who is going to occupy which position. That is the seriousness which we are touched. President Hakainde Ichirema, from the time he took over as president of the United Party, he has been very serious, and even the, 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 the party members, we took President Hakainde Ichirema in opposition as serious as he is today. There is nothing which has changed. You know, there is a serious need, if possible, if it was within my power, I was going to appoint and to set up a, 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 an opposition political party from all these, starting from UNIP, MMD, PF, and all these political parties. Let's get serious people in form one political party so that we can offer quality checks and balances to UPND. UPND will be relaxed if we are left without a quality uh, opposition political party. Hence, there is need for rebranding. Fifteen others, you don't see any serious political party? Uh, of course, we have uh, serious op uh, uh, opposition political parties which are silent because it is time to give room to President Hakai De Ichirema to introduce its, his team of credible men and women as he has started bit by bit unpacking the team. Are you and trying to say that the opposition political party next to you is not serious? No, no, the, the opposition next to me is it's very serious. It's very serious. Look at the way he's, uh, the, the way he's um, addressing the yeah, issues. But, of, but you're saying that uh, you, know, you need to combine all these to make one because all of them are not serious. Of course, that was not uh, literally um, uh, uh, like that. Of course, what I mean is that let's, yeah. let's have serious people uh, speaking. Not just these uh, jokers we are of, of the Nakachindas who come today with a binoculars as, as if he's a comedian, you see? Right. We, we are not entertained by that. We are, we are serious when uh, we are talking of issues of, um, of uh, economy and governance. All right. Thank you so much. Mr. Kondrani Sakala, UPPZ Secretary General, your party is not serious, including you. What's your reaction to that? It's very unfair for my comrade to use those terminologies because look at where we are now. We are saying, even the president, if I say he's not serious because he has not, I mean, formed his cabinet, I'll be very unfair with him. I mean, they have not started running. They have not started uh, showcasing their manifesto, telling us, I mean, doing what they told us. So for us now to start throwing stones at them, we we'll do that unfairly. Mm. Since my comrade looks at us as unserious people, for those who, whom he says they are jokers, the Nakachindas and so on, and because they are talking to him, they are serious, but jokers. One thing my comrade, you should understand is, we have realistic people. Mm. Who reason and think in this generation? Not everyone you see carrying a stone and throws at you, you will call the person that is serious. No, no, no. 
There are people who will look at you and offer to you a solution. Those are serious people. And those are people we are, we are waiting for and we are talking about. We are talking about policies here. Mm. We are talking about the realisticness of the free education. We want to see it happening in the Zambian people. Mm. All right. For me now, I can't say it's not possible because I, I don't know. I mean, His Excellency, the President, he said it. And I will hold the President at his word. I will not uh, disbelieve to what he said. I believe his words. And I'm still waiting, like the many Zambians have hope from what he said. Mm. We have. I have hope. Right. Because he is offering to us equal opportunities, whether you are UPND, whether you are... He is my president as well. Right. So the issue is, when there is need for offering checks and balances, comrade, I will not keep quiet. Mm. In as much as I expect what he said, what he promised to happen. Mm. All right. Should now, your, your, wrong? your party, Mr. Kondwali Sakala, did not do well in the previous elections. Are you also rebranding like the patriotic front? We are not rebranding. <clears throat> we are reinforcing. Because when you fail in certain subjects, you should go back to your drawing board and know what made me to fail. Do you know what made you to fail? Exactly, absolutely. What made you to fail? I may not disclose here because certain things they are you cannot disclose. But the issue is, the good part is, I know where we went wrong. Hmm. And I know where the Zambians were putting their cards. And from there, you will know to say, from this route, let's take the other route, or let's maintain the, this same route, so that we can gain All right. from the uh, voters. Thank you so much. Uh, allow me to invite three callers uh, who are watching us right now to add uh, a, a question or a comment to the topic at hand. The number is 0764250055, 0764. 250055. That is the number that you're using to call us and add a contribution or a comment to the topic at hand. We are discussing the role of the opposition with regards to checks and balances. Our first caller. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. How are you doing? Yes, I'm calling from Korea. All right. Please give us your comment or <clears throat> contribution in the next one minute. My contribution uh, on this topic. Are you getting me? Yes, yes, please go on, please go on. We can get you. Yes, but the fact that we are going to bounce back. That is my first comment. Because that thing I wanted for you to end our own generation. Mm. We appreciate your <clears throat> comment. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we only have one minute because of time, so please be precise with your comment or your question towards the panelist on the show this particular evening. Let's pick up another call. Good evening. Hello, Hello good, evening. good evening. Yes, who am I talking to? Hello? All right, all right, Mr. Banda, please uh, give us your comment or your question in the next minute. Uh, yeah, I want just 
contribute something on the, on the on topic. All right, please be quick. Uh, on the free education, hmm. I understand the government has not yet started working. The government has not yet started working. And uh, two, the budget was already made by the PF. So implementation of the free education cannot be there. And two, it's like you promise your wife that when I start working, I'll build you a house. And then the wife, be, you just marry, you just start working, and then the wife says, uh, build me a house. I think that cannot work. But the, the UPND government must start working now. Then they can implement those programs, those promises. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, and thank you for sticking to time as well. All right, 0764250055, 0764250055 is a number that you're calling on. Just uh, one more uh, caller, and then we uh, get back to the panelists. Hello, good evening. Very good, thanks. How are you doing? All right, who am I talking to and where are you calling from? Oh, Mr. Wiseman, uh, please give us your comment or question in the next minute. To, to find out uh, from uh, uh, my comment there, uh, not, not the, yeah, it, uh, the one with uh, the organization there. Yes, the Youth Unite yeah. Zambia Executive Director. Exactly. Yes. I wanted to find out from him to differentiate uh, what is the difference between uh, sex and balances and uh, age speech. Mm. Someone uh, posted on his Facebook account where he said he wants a cow mentality to remain uh, in 2021 and you're not going to not good, 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 good. Or that uh, something a good thing that different balances or the last person went to be caught in India. But I far last, far last, uh, that is my comment there. Yes. From the position point of view, point of view. All right. Thank, thank you as well. All right. Because of time, we have to end there with the calls. Uh, like I promised, I only allow uh, three calls uh, for tonight. Uh, let me start with um, you, Mr. Kondwana Nisakala. That question, the last question was directed to you. Uh, who is worthy to be called opposition uh, political leaders? Is it just any Jiman Jack or is it, is it someone who's worthy uh, to be called a political leader. Your three minutes starts now, and also you can also counter react to any of what the callers did come through to speak about. In all fairness, every political party which has not formed government, which is <coughs> not in government, those are opposition political parties. And their leaders, they are worthy to be called political uh, uh, party oppositions. So I, I, I cannot change anything, uh, I mean, rather than that. So coming to any other issues that uh, our callers have raised, it's the issues to do with His Excellency and his government plus the policies. We as Zambians are waiting we as Zambians, we are eagerly waiting to, uh, to receive the best from the promises which we are given. And as a, an opposition political party, I will not uh, bury my head in the sand like an ostrich to say, no, whatever they say will not happen because I'm in opposition. I will not do that. Because I'm a Zambian, I will support the best from this government. I will always be a patriotic Zambian. Before the election, we supported that ECZ should do the correct thing. And we managed to do that. During the counting at the National <coughs> Total Center, we made sure that Zambian vote is counted. No vote 
was to be missed or not to be counted. We didn't allow that. So in short, we are not just there as opposition, headlessly, be talking aimlessly. No, we are there to offer checks and balances where need, mm. support where we need to support the government of the day. Right. We are not there to pray for the government of the day to fail. Then we don't mean well. We better leave this politics and get back to farming. All right. You have 42 seconds. Your last remarks. The issue is we only have a one, one Zambia for all the political parties, over 50 political <clears throat> parties. We need to support the growth of the economy of this country as Zambians. We need to put aside our political affiliations. If we see things going good, where we see things going wrong, we need to speak about them in like manner as the party in government, where you have seen wrong in your own leaders, speak about them so that things go straight or correct. All right. Thank you so much. Mr. Jimmy Chela, UPND, National Youth IPS. There was a comment that did come through, uh, you know, talking about the free education and how uh, we need to give you more time as the UPND. Uh, of course, uh, if, you, if, you are promised, if you promise your wife, your wife rather, uh, a house and you start working right then and then, you cannot have that money. But as time accumulates, um, you can have that money to be build your wife a house. That is the comment that came through from a caller. What are your sentiments on it? And also, do you believe that PF is bouncing back? That's what the caller also said as well. I'll, I'll start from uh, PF bouncing back. The first um, thing which came in my mind, PF is bouncing back to come and do what? To come introduce back the cadres in the markets, in the bus stations to harass the Zambian people? Are they coming back to steal more? Are they coming back to abuse pub public resources? That is not what Zambians are going, to, are, are going to allow. What kind of PF is coming back? The PF of Nakachinda, the PF of Antonio Mwanza, the PF of uh, the past uh, president? That is not what Zambians want. You know, the landslide victory speaks volume. Right now, as a nation, let's forget about PF. PF will never exist. Uh, as it was, and never will we as a nation allow such a reckless government to exist again. This is why we are calling for a quality opposition political party to put UPND government to work, to put, actually in other ways, to assist UPND government to achieve its promises. That is what we are looking for. PF is not coming back. We know our history as a country. We have a track record what happens to former ruling parties. Now, let's come back to the issue of free education. As a nation, let us not disadvantage ourselves by shooting down such a noble initiative. As we earlier said, and the president has been alluding to this, he has been voted in by young people who are in their need of an education. These are young men and women who need, who are longing to be prepared so that they can positively contribute to the growth of this nation. Right now as it is, an ordinary Zambian youth is not in, in school. An ordinary Zambian youth does not have money to, to, to achieve their dreams. What do they need? They need to be given access all right. To how how long income. should you be given as a UPND <clears throat> with regards to free education? As a, it is not as a UPND, as a government. Mm. Coming from UPND? As a government, yes, coming from UPND. Yeah. So how long should you be given? First and foremost, let us wait until we have the, the, the Minister of Education. And now it is the policies which are going to... to it is what framework policy. did you put in your manifesto? Uh, you know, in the time frame that uh, you... First and foremost, once we fight corruption... Once we fight corruption, we are going to have resources. What framework did you put, put in, in your manifesto? We are going to put in initiatives already, already, already as a nation. We have initiatives like uh, the higher education loan schemes. All right. It is about using such institutions. We expand them. We make them more. 
will make them more effective so they can absorb all right, so what's, what's, what's the time frame for everything that you've said with regards to free education you manifest? I think for us, the, the, the time frame is on how quick we fight corruption, how quick we recover the money. Right, how so there's no, there's no time frame at the moment. As, as long as, if corruption takes five years to fight, you know, uh, it will take you five years to give free education. It won't take us five years to give free education as a nation. It is a gradual process. More and more youths who will be right. in the road on free education. Your time is up, but I'll give you 30 seconds to give your, time, your final remarks. Uh, my final remarks are this. As a nation, we have done a recommendable job by ushering in a government which is responsible, a government which cares for its people, a government which has the interests of the Zambian people at heart. All right. Through the leadership of Hakai and Ichirema, now we have a sense of hope. Let us not be swelled or discouraged by... All right. Thank you so much. My directors are telling me that time is really uh, running because we have the main news coming up at 21.15. But hey, uh, let's get into um, our last uh, guest for this particular evening, uh, Mr. Water Kasempa, the Youth Unite Executive Director. Your question, one of the callers did ask the difference between checks and balances as well as hate speech. What is the difference? And then also, um, you <clears throat> give us your final remarks. Uh, I believe that you're a quick speaker. You can speak within two minutes. Oh, yes. All right, so we give you two minutes, and then we end the program. Affirmative. So, uh, simply put, checks and balances is just the consistent and objective scrutinization of a government's policies and actions towards the development of a country. That is what a, checks and, a check and a balance is. Hate speech is character assassination. And my comrade mentioned earlier, as opposition leaders, they are not supposed to attack personality, but policy. What policies align with the vision and mission of this nation? This is what uh, opposition leaders need to do. So that is the difference. Hate speech, simply character assassination that is baseless. Checks and balances are simply scrutinization of policies, plans, and programs towards the development of this nation. And my follow, final remarks, not only as a panelist here, but to the Zambian people, the people that really matter. We are at the precipice of our destiny as a nation. And we are an enlightened and dynamic force upon whom the future and destiny of this nation lies. So let our hopes, dreams, and aspirations shouldn't lie on the UPND, shouldn't lie on UPPZ or any other party or the president of the Republic of Zambia. The potentials that are there in this nation are dependent on the Zambian people. So this is a moment that we must wake up and put our hands together to ensure that Zambia is made great again. I thank you. Mm, all right. You still had a few seconds, but thank you so much for being articulate <clears throat> and for at least saving us some time on that. Uh, panelists, thank you so much also for coming through to Planto. Thank you for inviting us. All right. Uh, my name is Cholachi Shah. This is Blood Talk, the fearless debate. We are back next week, same time.